Clerk will call the roll. Glenn Whitley, County Judge. Here. Roy Charles Brooks, Commissioner Precinct 1. Present. Devin Allen, Commissioner Precinct 2. Thank you. Our invocation today will be delivered by Reverend Matt Schroeder from the Trinity Lutheran Church in Fort Worth. After the invocation, please remain standing for our pledges. Thank you for coming out today. Thank you, Judge Whitley, Commissioners. Thank you for the invitation and the hospitality here today. Trinity Lutheran Church is proud to be a part of the faith community here in Tarrant County, and we are very grateful for the work that you all do here. If you'd please join me in prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God, our creator, spring comes with promise and plenty. We witness the glory of what your hands have made as life blooms around us. Help us to remember that this new life is due to the death of another before it. New life and death are cyclical and we are part of this cycle. What a blessing this life is. God of hope and mercy, we pray for those suffering in the wake of the bomb cyclone and the flooding in Nebraska, Missouri, and much of the Midwest. We pray for the lives lost and the families affected by the recent aviation disasters. And we hold the victims of the terrorist attack in Christchurch, New Zealand in our hearts. Our prayers are heavy in these painful days. Be with these suffering and all others that we name before you in our thoughts. Sustainer God, we pray for your presence here today. Stir the hearts of these leaders so they may do good work for all of your creation. Help us to remember the poor in our community, the sick, the bereaved, the lonely, and the oppressed. Guide us so that the least of these may always be at the heart of what we do. And eternal God, this season reminds us of the resurrection promise. We are reminded through these times that we have no abiding city, but we seek one that is to come. We thank you for the witness of the departed that have gone on before us, these saints in our lives that have shown us how to be faithful leaders, good friends, healthy stewards to the blessings you've given us. Thank you for the gift of these loved ones who are no longer among us. All of this and more we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. agenda announcements <clears throat> thank you honor members of the court we have one announcement and it's not necessarily for this agenda but it's for another meeting of the commissioner's court uh, today at two o'clock in the family law center we have the um, IT steering committee and um, and in that meeting we're going to be discussing something that uh, I'd like to give you a little preview of this morning I know that every one of you received my text message early Saturday morning, and uh, <laughs> all of us didn't. Well, it was sent. I, apparently, the, that satellite doesn't cover all the way out to northwest part of the county. So, oh God, I read my text messages. <laughs> anyway, we have some really good news, and the good news that we have is that um, uh, we began at about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock Friday night to implement and to bring live the uh, case tracks part of TechShare Courts. And uh, that's a big thing. And we had representatives and, and people from TechShare up here from Austin. We had our team. Uh, we had um, uh, Mr. Schubert's team. We had representatives from both the clerks and from the DA that were either there or on the phone to help us with this. It was, um, it was a good implementation. And uh, we, um, we regrouped again Saturday because we had one small issue that, uh, that we corrected uh, through Friday nights. We loaded all the data on Saturday and all the testing went very well. And so at eight o'clock yesterday morning, we went live on case tracks. And the courts are now using it and um, it is working exceedingly well. 
Uh, we were down in the war room uh, this morning uh, visiting with some of our people and, and, uh, and Greg's people and, and also uh, people from TechShare. And you could tell that they have spent the last 48 hours awake because some <laughs> of them look like, like they need to go to bed. <coughs> also found out that they ate more donuts than anyone else in the city of Fort Worth or Tarrant County over the weekend. In fact, some of them still had somewhat of a sugar high and <laughs> you just kind of leave them alone when they're at that point. But uh, it was really good because we're on target. We hit our target on this and the software works and it is a significant piece of the entire court module which we are going to be bringing on uh, at the end of this fiscal year. So we want to say thank you to uh, all of our partners and there were partners. In fact, that's what makes this type of implementation, development and implementation so great, is that we have partners with criminal courts administration, both the clerk's offices, from the auditor's office, from the sheriff's department, from the district attorney's office, obviously from IT, from TechShare, all of these are partners in the court module and all of them work for, on one goal and that's to successfully develop and implement this software and that's what we're doing. And so I want to congratulate, we have, we have Mr. Sugar here with his team. His team is down in the war room working this morning and Mr. Sugar here. And we have, what's that? Come on forward. Yeah. But we also have representatives from the IT department that also played a very significant role in this. So <coughs> Mr. Sugar just asked if he could say a word to the court about this. Thank you, GK. Judge, just when I called the judge to tell him that we were done, he told me to go home because he could tell I was very exhausted. Uh, but I, I just want you to know it is really exciting for us that we began, began something seven and a half years ago to get to this point. You know, much work was put in by TechShare, Tarrant County IT, the respective clerk's offices, and our court staff and our judges to get us to this point. I mean, it's really true that the collaborative way of Tarrant County was on display. And I just want to make another point, as you're aware, that in the middle of all of trying to get case tracks going, the court shifted gears and went to central magistration. So the same staff that made sure case tracks go live also implemented tech share magistration in the middle of all this. And I want you to know that that court staff went above and beyond to get us to where we are. Uh, so we made both of these successful. So now we've now the, the courts have deployed case tracks uh, magistration. We've ar already done incident defense. We have case we have a uh, tech share filter. So we've actually have four tech share products in our portfolio, and we want to be appreciative of the investment that, that the commissioner's court has put into tech share. We know we're not done yet, as GK said, but we want to make, you know, this is going to buoy us to the finish line. Uh, it's, uh, we got a lot of work still ahead of us, but to get us to this point was phenomenal. And I appreciate all the work that IT tech share and all the different departments did us to get there, but I really appreciated the investment that, uh, the commissioner's court put us and let us move forward. Greg, I'm going to, I'm just going to echo a little bit what GK said. Um, it was a team effort, and I appreciate very much your staff, IT, all the people who worked on this, because again, this is second mile, this kind of second mile given or second mile work. Uh, you know, eventually we think this is going to make a big difference in efficiencies in a lot of different areas, but it's, you know, that it doesn't go without some pain and suffering. And I appreciate very much the effort that the staff and, you know, from the court coordinators all the way, you know, all the way through the process, all over the county. Uh, I appreciate the way you have approached this and have not said, okay, just thrown up the hands at the first time something doesn't go just perfect. And uh, I appreciate that very, very much. And I want you to please tell everybody how much I appreciate their effort. We'll let them know. If I may. Uh, congratulations to the IT team, to all of the partner departments who are involved in this implementation. I recognize that the world is often divided between those who believe that the glass is half empty or those who believe that it's half full. I want to declare that this morning it is half full. 
full. This is a success, it's a milestone along the path of implementation of the entire court's system, which shall be implemented by the end of the year. It shall be on track. It shall be under budget. And it shall be good when we get there. Thank you. Yes, sir. Scott. You say something, Scott. Uh, well, I, 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 I'm Scott Shepard from <coughs> IT, and uh, I, I would just like to say I appreciate really everyone, uh, all the departments uh, that partnered on this uh, to, to help us. We had, when we were uh, here all night uh, over the weekend, on both weekend, uh, both weekend nights, um, we had like 25 people in the war room, right, that were there with us all night long doing, doing diff various uh, tasks and uh, waiting for things to happen so that they could test. We had people on the phone from the different departments to help us test, and they were very, uh, everybody worked together so well in uh, uh, getting this thing uh, live. So I, I just wanted to say thank you to all the teams. That's, that's, really, that's really who did it was everybody, everybody pulled together to do this. So. Thank you very much. Good thank job. You. Thank you. Congratulations. Good job, GK. Yes, Court members, you have before you the minutes of our regular meeting of March the 12th. Move for a little bit. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, resolutions, Commissioner Allen. Yes. Well, as uh, many of us know, that March is Women's History Month. And I am glad to have this opportunity to recognize a group in Tarrant County that does tremendous work. Um, and we are all made up of women. The organization is called Women Inspiring Philanthropy. Um, so I'm going to read the resolution into the record. Women Inspiring Philanthropy is a local nonprofit comp comprised of a group of women who seek to transform lives in Arlington, Texas. And whereas their common goal is to ensure the well being of Arlington by supporting causes and sustainable projects that are vital for the future of the community. And whereas Women Inspiring Philanthropy does this through high impact and lifelong giving, and these dedicated women combine their dollars in order to make a bigger impact. And whereas initiatives that guide their, that guide their giving include programs and projects that improve the culture climate, improve education, cultural climate rather, improve education, enhance the lives of children and families, address health and wellness issues and those that positively impact our environment. And whereas eligible organizations apply through the Women Inspiring Philanthropy grant process applications and are evaluated and grants are presented each year and since, whereas since their inception and in bestowing their first grant in 2012, Women Inspiring Philanthropy has awarded over $500,000 in grants. And whereas their focus on making an impactful difference in the community is improving the ability of local charities to better serve others. And whereas Women Inspiring Philanthropy believes that charity fills an immediate need while philanthropy <coughs> makes change happen. And we, they, are looking to make change happen. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do hereby commend Women Inspiring Philanthropy. And it's especially fitting during Women's History Month that we recognize them for the work they are doing to help others and to make our community a better place. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hands and caused the Silk Tarrant County to be affixed its 19th day of March 2019. Um, I have a few additional remarks, um, and as I'm making those remarks, I would like the Women, Insp Women Inspiring Philanthropy Group, or at least some of our 100 plus members, to go ahead and come to the podium. Um, wanted to share some of the, oh, you guys can go ahead and come forward. Um, some of the organizations that have uh, been recipient of Women Inspiring Philanthropy <coughs> funds, including the Boys and Girls Club of Arlington, uh, they were able to implement a STEM program at Peach Elementary, um, Arlington ISD, Arlington Museum of Art, Dental Health Arlington, Arlington Life Shelter, and also Texas Health Resources. Uh, through the work of Women Inspiring Philanthropy and other donors, we're able to um, equip a sexual assault nurse examiner's uh, program, uh, which is the only one that side of Tarrant County. Um, so I have Linda Dipert, who's joined us, as well as Karen Ellen Anderson, uh, my colleague, Judge Mary Tom Kernut, 
Patty Decker, Cindy Haynes, Beth Hellyer, Julie Landry, Connie Lorick, Lou Ann O'Donnell, Debbie Patterson, and Kathleen Valentine. I think that I've recognized everyone who's joined us. I'm going to come down and present this resolution. And, and also I make a motion. Your Thank motion. you. Also make a motion. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And while she's bringing that down, I want to thank y'all too for everything you do for your community and for. I just know that in addition to the dollars, you give hundreds of hours uh, and make a big, big difference. So we'll just come around and get a quick picture. Okay. Y'all come around here and look that way. She's gonna she's gonna take three pictures. The one with the flash. Kelly may only take one or two, but. Thank y'all very much. We'll get you, we'll get the podium back over and you can make some comments. Thank you. Congratulations. Watch him, he's dangerous when he starts rolling that thing. Just watch your toes. Now, I will say that Linda is one of the founding members. I know that there are some other uh, founding members who could not be here today. I think we have one other founding member, but uh, you do a fabulous job in speaking to the work that WIP does. Thank you. Yes, Debbie Patterson's here, and she's a founding member as well. So Judge Whitley and Commissioner Allen and Commissioners Brooks, Bikus, and Johnson, thank you very much. On behalf of the members who are here and the other 100 or so that are not here, we're honored to receive this and, and appreciate it. We have another 100000 that we hope to fund this year. So we're, we're growing and continuing our, our good work. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Court members, you have before you our consent agenda. Move no approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Stidwell. We have one item for the court's consideration this morning, and that is that we're requesting the court approve the release of the $17 million and $1. Of collateral is outlined in your court communique. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? <coughs> Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Ms. Glenn. Good morning. Good morning. I have three items today. I can't believe you guys didn't beat me to the first one. So my first item, we're asking the court to receive and follow the personnel <coughs> agenda. So move. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Our second item, we're asking the court to approve a waiver of terminal benefits for domestic relations. Ms. Glenn is requesting a waiver of 143 vacation hours effective March 20th with net savings to the general fund. We're estimating to be approximately uh, $2,460 in some change. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And our third and final item, we're asking the court to approve our 21st annual Tarrant County Employee Picnic at Six Flags. Uh, the date that we've tentatively selected is Sunday, October 6th. What we're asking the court today uh, is to approve our, our deposit in the amount of $4,000. $745. If approved, that does allow us to save the October 6th date and funds are budgeted for this deposit. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Vinny. Nope. It don't look like Vinny. <laughs> yeah, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Benny and his wife are about to have a baby, so they have one more doctor trip. So <laughs> that's where they are today. Hey. Uh, we have one item uh, with public health, and that is the services coordination agreement between Tarrant County and the hospital district. And this is the pregnant and postpartum intervention program that allows us to make referrals to, uh, to uh, JPS, who has case managers to help women 
who are involved in substance use during their pregnancy and in the postpartum period. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Beecham. <coughs> Go ahead. No, I'm not going to even go there. I mean, I, you know, I know you all are in that little tournament up in New York. Well, we're dancing, just not in the big dance. But if you wanted to watch our game, you could find it. It's on a reputable sports network, ESPN. Or the in, or the your your big dance folks are on True TV, which is between the Food Channel and Cartoon Network. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> We're in the big dance. Yes, sir. We have seven items for your consideration this morning. Our first item is a bid, a bid award recommendation for bid 2019-048. This is a bid for waterproofing and the facade repair at the 1895 courthouse. Recommendation be toward the low bidder, uh, Bryco Bryant, the amount of $22,600. If the court approves this, we're also seeking contract approval. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is another bid award recommendation for bid 2019-054. This is a contract for uh, preventive maintenance and repair of uh, uninterruptible power supply equipment for the county. Uh, recommendation be toward on a pre price basis, hourly labor rate, and markup for parts, awarding sections one and two to the primary, secondary, and alternate vendors as shown in court communicate. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Our third item is also a bid award recommendation for bid 2019-064. This is our annual contract for installation and removal of our guard fencing. Our recommendation will be to award a pre enterprise basis, awarding to Van Eli Incorporated. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number four, also a bid award recommendation for bid 2019-080. This is a contract for fire sprinkler inspections, backflow uh, pre uh, preventer testing, maintenance and repair. Recommendation would be to order per enterprise basis, hourly labor rate, and markup for parts, awarding to the primary, secondary, and alternate vendors who are shown in court communique. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number five is an item in regards to bid 2017-144. This is a new contract for a purchase of class seven cab and chassis trucks, uh, box van bodies, and lift gates. Uh, this was renewed in commissioner court on August 7th, 2018, under court order 128249. Uh, in February of, of 2019, we received uh, letters from both Rush Truck and Premier uh, stating that they could no longer honor their uh, pricing on the tail lift gates. They both received three. Uh, price in increases. We've seen letters from the manufacturer due to the federal tariffs. Uh, with that in mind, we are recommending cancellation of, of the award to these primary vendors and seeking permission to rebid. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. In regards to that, just to let the court know, uh, we are taking a look at all the, the uh, bids that we process that are steel related and might have uh, federal tariffs involved. And we're looking at the, the uh, contract term links in order to uh, try to alleviate uh, problems like this in the future. Um, I don't know if we six. do something along that line. I guess what I would suggest is, is that if we're going to say we can adjust based upon tariffs, then I would want an up or down adjustment. I understand. Our, our recommendation, I think we're, we're going to try just uh, uh, decreasing the, the term length of the contract, maybe a one with a one, so we at least have a, a firm fixed price in place for hopefully a year, which would save money for years and years. And then we could, uh, if, if they couldn't renew, we'd at least get a one firm fixed price term, but, but we will um, watch it closely. We're, we're aware of that. That seems like a good way to go. Okay. Item number six, um, item in regards to RFP 2019-004. This is an RFP for social media listening platform for the Sheriff's Office. Uh, the Sheriff's Office, <coughs> IT and purchasing are all three recommending rejection of the, of the two proposals that we received and seeking to rebid with revised specifications. 
Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Last item in regards to request for application 2019-081. This was an RFA for the depository for the county of public funds, uh, trust funds, uh, court registry funds, and our procurement card services. We received two proposals. Uh, both of them added verbiage that was not acceptable uh, through the DA's office uh, and through the purchasing office. We are reject, uh, recommending rejection of both bids and seeking permission to rebid with vice president. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Thank you Jack. <coughs> Commissioner Fickus. Yes, sir. I have um, interlocal in the city of Fort Worth on a number of street projects. Um, Willow Springs Road, Blue Mound Road, Alta Vista Road, Haslett Roanoke Road, Euless South Main Street, and Tarrant Main Street. Move for approval on 8K, 1A, and B. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Are there any appointments today? There being none, then you have before you the claims, including the addendum. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> Briefing items, Mr. Manius. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the court, we have two items for you this morning. The first is the monthly update by the hospital district. Mr. Early is here to address the court at this time. Thank you, Mr. Manius. Um, one of the things that you try to do is make sure particularly from a public hospital standpoint that everybody's doing well and everybody's happy and I walked in today and I saw Jack Beecham and he looked very distraught and I was concerned for Jack because I want to try to help him at all times and what he expressed to me was his fear that basketball was going to take over the cartoon channel and he mentioned to me that that's the only place you can see the Jetsons and Tom and Jerry live. So um, I'll do what I can, but I don't know that that makes a difference at a public I'm just going to tell you, Jack, as he was coming up here, he was grinning, and I knew there was something coming. I'm just um, glad you can come up here and be humorous. You betcha. Thank you. Um, to, to that point, we do. Um, you know, you, you never want to forget what JPS is there for. JPS is there to save lives. That's what we do every day, all the time. And since January 20th uh, and the accident we had uh, regarding that situation, it's been difficult. But I know that many of y'all have asked, many of the people when I walked in here today asked what the status of our team member is. And the great thing, and I think the thing that we sometimes lose in all this, is the incredible work that the trauma team did. Because um, our patient, our team member, our coworker is alive. Um, and progressing, and um, she is talking, and um, that's a real positive, and that's a really good thing. And in the midst of everything else, you can't lose your mission, and you can't lose what you're there to do. And what you're there to do every day is to save a life. And that's what that trauma team does, and they haven't been mentioned. And that's where I think we ought to spend some of our focus, is realizing that lady, um, Karen, and the beautiful person that she is, and she can talk to her children. Um, the second thing I want to mention to y'all is um, with the help of um, Mr. Manius, and he's played a, a key role in this, we want to try to figure out where JPS goes post-bond. It's very important to realize what we do. And one of the things that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're providing the proper services for your patients, for the community, and for the taxpayers that help pay for those services. And so what you don't want to do in a, in a post-bond era is just build buildings. Quite frankly, just building buildings is the easiest of the tasks. What you want to do is figure out what services you put in those buildings. And if it calls for 200 more beds for program X, Y, or Z, you want to try to figure out what that's going to be like because the decisions we make at JPS right now are going to be the decisions they're going to look back in 30 years and say, thank goodness they made those decisions. <laughs> So with the help of Commissioner Brooks, the, uh, Judge Whitley, Mr. Manius, Mr. Petty, and myself, we're going to serve basically as, as, as a group that begins to look at some of those issues and begins to at least communicate with some groups 
as to what we do and get some ideas, and then all of those ideas will be bought, brought back to the commissioner's court for your approval, your debate, and your discussion as we go forward. But we thought we'd do some of that um, preliminary work and listen to some of the comments that people might have as we figure out how to progress. If you look at healthcare and the incredible momentum that it has for change right now and what a smartphone will do from blood pressure checks to your heart rate on down, um, it's an amazing world that healthcare has changed even in the last 10 years. So just building more space is probably not our answer. Building the right space with the right services that will serve this community for the next 30 to 40 years is our, is our mainstay. So we're working on, I'm working with Mr. Manius on the proper RFPs so that we can work on getting requests for proposals from people who can look at not only the actual building aspects of it, but the strategy and the future of healthcare so that we can all be proud as a commissioner's court and a board of JPS and administration that we did the right things. So I wanted to give you an update on that. Um, Mr. Manius and I are also working on um, a calendar so that we can have those meetings and we'll probably have them on either a monthly or every two month basis and then all that information will be presented back to the court. If y'all have any questions about that, I'm happy to, to deal with that or any other question y'all might have. One thing that we need to do and we've We've begun to land to, you know, to, I think, put some of the groundwork in place is the legislation that is going through the legislature right now regarding revenue caps would be devastating to a public hospital. And so uh, we have begun to say that as they look at this legislation, <coughs> that at a minimum, public hospitals need to be carved out of that. Remember that when we, you know, we were adamant with our voters that we would not raise the tax rate if we if they would give us approval on um, this bond issue. And that was based upon the fact that we were, you know, our forecast for growth and appraised value, new construction and things along that type of lines. So uh, if, if we were to see a cap placed on that, then that would make that a very difficult <coughs> promise to keep. Absolutely. And so we have had conversations with um, folks on the Ways and Means Committee in the House, as well as, I believe, other state leaders in an effort to make sure that if that, as that le legislation progresses through, that at a minimum we can get <coughs> the hospital districts, public hospital districts, carved out of that. But that's, if, you're, if you talk with any legislators or you have an opportunity to, I think it would be important to mention that that could be devastating to, uh, to a public hospital, not just because of the bond issue, but also because of monies that they send to the federal government that then produces money back to the, non to the other nonprofit and other hospitals within the community. Uh, if, if we send a dollar up, the federal government sends back more than two times that, two and a half times that, I believe, to the to other nonprofit and hospitals within our community. That money does not come back to JPS. It is spread among those other ones. And when you start limiting those dollars and the amount of revenue that can come in, you're going to limit the amount of money that can be transferred out. Just to put that in perspective, and I appreciate your comments, you all know that because of formula f changes in the, in the actual formula fundings, JPS has received about $17 million less in the last two years from funding from the federal government. It hasn't because we've done anything incorrect. It isn't because we changed anything. It's that the federal formula changed and it's passed through dollars through the state and the formula by which it, it, it adheres to changed. That was about a $17 million loss that we had to figure out how to absorb. If the 2.5% property tax would come in, our preliminary estimates have it at about $14 million, the loss to JPS. When you take $17 million historically that we've been seeing, and the projections might be the same for that um, sort of proportionate loss, and then you look at a, at a cap like that, it makes it very, very difficult because we can't make up that difference. We're not going to make it up on volume, uh, and we're not going to make it up on a patient base. So it becomes very difficult. I will say in, in respect to the judge and the work that you all have done, 
Um, the legislators that I've spoken to have been quite responsive at this point. It's a long battle, and it's really going to be difficult. Um, but they have provided, certainly me, uh, a very open ear to listening to the challenges that we and all the other public hospitals and all the rural hospitals would face in this Texas. In Texas would be a significant challenge. Um, the last thing that I would want to say is I, I do want to thank you all for the immeasurable support that you've provided JPS, each one of you individually in, in, in what has been a, a difficult situation. But I appreciate the support and the understanding of the reason JPS is in business and the reason is to save lives. And I appreciate that, and I appreciate y'all's strong support. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Robert. You're Robert, are we, are we building these counties for the patients that come in from their counties that don't have public hospitals? We don't actually send them a bill. We have communicated to them, particularly um, with the increase that we've seen from mental health and some of the counties, and we've um, begun to remind them that in some cases they're driving by three and four other facilities where those mental health patients um, certainly could, could be provided their care. Uh, and we are communicating not only with the hospital administrators, but um, the elected officials as well. Um, but we haven't actually sent them a bill. Um, Parkland did that a few years ago. Um, it was not very effective, um, but I think we've got to figure out the best way to handle that. You know, as I've talked with a few of the people out in West Texas, some of them have indicated that they have arrangements worked out mm -hmm. with other counties. And it may be that if we can get a census of those counties that are using us, that we might attempt to sit down at the table with their uh, courts, with their representatives from their commissioner's court, and see if we might not work out some sort of a form. The other thing, Commissioner Johnson, is that area is probably the most difficult with our mental health and behavioral health patients. And part of it is, quite frankly, JPS does a really good job in that regard. And we get 15 to 1,600 psychiatric patients a month. So when we see those kind of volumes and word gets out about uh, the expediency by which a small um, community who has 15 police officers on the force and a third of them are dealing with mental health patients. They want to go where it's the quickest in and out process. And JPS has has definitely has there um, been any proposed that. legislation that might cover this? No, sir. Not that I'm not that I'm not go. that I'm aware of. No, those those counties that uh, that do not have a public hospital district like we do, there's a statutory requirement that they that they spend a certain portion of their general funds for for indigent health care. Judge, you might help me. I don't know. Eight percent. Eight percent. Eight percent. Who do they spend it with? The normal local give, doctors and yeah. Well, I think that I think your question is who do they spend it with is a good question too because I'm not sure that we, that that audits have really been performed on what level of indigent care support any of the surrounding counties are doing. Um, but I I tend to agree. We have a service and we provide it well. I'd, I'd like to work out an arrangement with them by which we could receive funding uh, and we could better take care of patients. We do a good job. Let's see if we can maybe write some letters and set up some meetings and at least see what we can do in that regard. Okay. I will do Thank that. You. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Robert. Mr. Court, on <laughs> legislative issues, uh, Mr. Schaffner is giving you a, uh, a memorandum. I believe that it's in your red folder this morning. would like to point out a couple of things. Um, uh, negotiations continued on both HB2 and SB2. Uh, this is the revenue cap issue that the judge spoke of earlier. And neither House nor the Senate have the votes to pass that bill out uh, in its current form. There are discussions about compromises uh, to the revenue cap. Uh, uh, there's various proposals out there, uh, but uh, nothing has stuck yet. Um, the Senate actually is saying that they're waiting for the House to send over a bill before they're going to consider that. Is that going to happen? We don't know. This is way too <coughs> early. It's still way too early in the process. What we're hearing is the House could end up putting something on the floor and could, um, it, it may still be a couple of weeks away, but what it basically says is, is this, I think, is the Senate can't get the votes necessary to send anything over. Because normally the Senate sends something over to the House earlier. So the, the pressure is going to be on the House, and so we need to keep our pressure up 
uh, in that regard to that. They're, you know, they've started talking about a bunch of carve outs. And the thing that concerns me about that is everybody is now recognized that our school finance bill is broken, our funding formula is broken because it's so complicated that nobody can figure out where we are. We start doing the carve outs on our property tax, we're gonna end up with the same mess that we've got in public education finance because they're gonna say, well, it's gonna, you know, in this situation, you can, you know, they're talking about having a five year look back. Uh, I mean, CPAs are gonna just love this. I'm just, I mean, it's it's better than the Retirement Act, the legislature, or the Congress <laughs> passed a couple of, well, it's probably been a couple of decades ago, not a couple of years ago now. But um, the comp more complicated you make it, um, attorneys and CPAs just love it. So we yeah, need to keep it simple. Do. I'll, yeah, I'll, they, it makes me on the first of every month wonder what I did. Glenn, are they still talking about carve outs for mud districts? And you know, they, they talked initially, the Senate looked mm -hmm. at carve outs based upon the amount of revenue you collected. And they said, okay, it won't apply if you collect 15 million or less in revenue. But then, and so everybody, the smaller groups all just went home. Well, <coughs> when it came back to, to pass out the bill, they said, well, yeah, you can, you can eliminate yourself, but you have to eliminate it by a vote. Well, that just killed that. They brought everybody back in. So they're talking about carve outs for that. They're talking about carve outs for public safety. They're, take, they're talking about carve outs for disasters. They're talking about carve outs for growth. Transportation. Transportation. It, it's gonna get to, they're talking about carve outs for unfunded mandates. But then they've gotta <laughs> figure out, then they've got to figure I mean, and, and they do all this carve out in this on this one sheet, and then at the very bottom they say, oh, by the way, if after you do all this carve out, it goes over 8%, which is where we are right now, then you got to have a vote. So that it's, it's pretty apparent that um, what, with all the carve outs that they're not, that they're basically going to get to the point where it doesn't have any impact. And it's, again, if they'll fix the finance, the public education finance formula, it will make a huge difference. And the, and the 2018 numbers just came out. 2017, local taxpayers, you and I, spent $8 billion more than what the state spent on public education. In 2018, that grew to $10 billion. And that's because their formula is broken, and if property values are rising, are rising, more we pay more, and the state pays less. I think the our share in that increase went up by almost two billion dollars. The state's share during that same period up went up by, I think it was around maybe fifty million dollars, million with an M, versus two two billion with a B. So they need to fix the formula, and they've not proposed anything yet that would fix the formula. Keep the heat on. Also, the uh, House Appropriations Bill, which is which is the only the single piece of legislation that the legislature actually has to uh, approve during the session, it's expected to go out to the House floor a week from Wednesday, a week from tomorrow. Uh, there's two other items that um, that we'd like to report on, HB 705 by with, from Garen. That bill is out. Remember, that's the substitute sales tax. That bill is out of House Ways and Means, and it's headed to the floor of, of it's headed to calendar so it get on the floor of the House. And then finally, um, that excuse me, one second. that is likely to be the first bill that the House sends over to the Senate. It yeah. would allow us to substitute just a little over a penny in sales tax for all of our MO property tax. And our MO property tax is slightly over, I believe it's slightly over 21 cents per $100 value. Um, so that's, and that's Charlie Guerin's bill. As Trump would say, bigly. Bigly. <laughs> and then finally, um, 
We're also watching HB 362 by Capri Leone. This particular bill, which is a very good bill, is, uh, is a bill that would create a fund that the counties could get reimbursed for what they spend on election machines, voting machines. Oh, wonderful. And so this is, is not just futuristic, but if, if we're buying machines now, or have just recently, it would actually reimburse us for, for, for that. I think it's a matching kind of 50-50. Yeah, I believe that's what it is. And we, we indicated that we have spent about 14 million, we budgeted about $14 million. So we're watching that bill. There's, it's a $158 million pot of money down there that we don't know the success of that, but the fact that it's out there, and I know that some court members have played a, a, a role in getting that done, uh, that's, that's a pretty big thing for us. So we can get reimbursed, that will free up that other money for uses in other areas. And I think Russell's also working on some transparency issues, making sure that we stay transparent, make right. sure that we stay under the purchasing. Yeah, we remember we talked about that last time, and the last court meeting also, and uh, open government uh, transparency related issues, and and we're going to anything that compromises that, but we're going to be in a blocking mode on, on those particular bills. So there are other issues you can tell by looking at that it, at that uh, memorandum that there's a, a lot of things going on down there. It's right in the middle of the session. This is when it really heats up. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a mad dash to uh, to the finish line. So with that, I'll attempt to answer any questions that the court may have. I have one related to the countywide polling place program. Yes. Um, I know obviously we're going through our own process of uh, evaluating the vote center model and uh, elections equipment. Do we see that these that this proposed legislation would negatively impact us in any way? With our with our current timeline, no, I don't believe I. We don't we don't anticipate. In fact, um, the court has for the last six months have, have been supportive of that because not only would it be something that would be a, a, a ease for our citizens, but also we took that into account whenever we uh, began the purchase process of those machines, and then that is Senate Bill uh, 101 by Menendez and HB 177 by Bernal. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Your Honor, that's all we have at this time. Then we'll recess our open meeting, proceed to close to discuss items exempt under Section 551.071072074076 and 087 of the Texas Government Code. Having returned from our closed session, there being no business to conduct at this time, we stand adjourned.